Okay, the Heinkel 111. I've not made... vlogged about it at all. No, not at all. No. Oh, I'm beginning to wonder. I just sort of got on, on with it. So um, it's 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 the first time I've built a Heinkel 111. It was such a classic airbag. Oh, oh no, second time. It was an Airfix one decades and decades ago, which um, had a turret, which some models did, but it's quite unfortunate. But this is a Battle of Britain era version. So it doesn't got a turret. It's got it's got a lot of single. Can, can we see the lid? Handheld machine gun. Positions. So we don't have to get. So some of us don't know what the hell you're on about. Oh, you've got stuff in the lid. Oh, sure. Well, people don't know about how I got one of them. I don't know what you're talking about. It's if you've ever seen the Battle of Britain movie, they've got. Well, they're not actually Honka 111s, they're Spanish built ones with Rolls Royce Merlin engines used by the Spanish Air Force after the war. But that's a picture of uh, the Battle of Britain era, is the one I'm building. And tip it towards the phone a bit, tip it forward a bit. Oh no, don't do that, reflecting a lot. Okay. So, um, and it's quite a nice kit. It's ICM, which is a new uh, new company to me, uh, based in Ukraine, interestingly. Um, it's going together quite well. This bit is quite, this get, gets a bit difficult, trying to get the fuselage sides together. And I'm putting them together to get the interior worked out properly. There's the top panel. It's actually quite a nice kit. It does fit together pretty well, given the uh, difficulties of getting the fuselage to go together. <laughs> That's the, there's an open gun position there. Um, you may not be able to see much of the interior, but... Uh, Hold on, last time we did this, the light made a big difference. That's the main compartment. This bit is the bomb compartment which will contain that when I when I put it all together that slides up into it oh I've been, wonder, I've been wondering what that's sitting here today wondering what that and is the, unusually in the high call the bombs were put in vertically which is quite odd but the main struggle has been the crew um hold on it's not focusing. There we are. That's focus. No, you don't move. I'll move. Right. Okay. Kit doesn't come with a crew, so I managed to find some from Hannant's, I think it was, uh, to Luftwaffe crew. Uh, unfortunately, they were crew for a Messerschmitt 262, a fighter, not a not a bomber. Um, so I've had to modify them a bit. Um, I'm just trying to steady it because you're shaking it. Yeah. This guy in particular had his knees curled up. So I've had to cut them and adjust them and lengthen them a bit to get him to touch the floor. Um, and try to get sort of interesting postures. Um, I won't be putting other crew in because I think I'm sort of posing it, just sitting on the ground waiting for the rest of the crew to turn up. But it's going quite well. And I bought a set of aftermarket um, etch metal parts just to add more detail which works quite well and I've made a load of machine guns ready to go in trousers oh, we can see them it's okay so at this stage all the journalists specialize in single Rifle caliber machine guns, which were handheld, which were not as effective as British turrets, of course, but and these ammunition pods they do go in these bombs, engines. Propellers are done. No, that's not focusing. It's focusing on the hand behind. Okay. Wheels, which I tried to make look sort of muddy because the Luftwaffe were 
usually flying from prepared fields really. So I've got them muddy and a bit uh, weathered. You're a bit too close to the camera, that's why it's not focusing, you're pushing it towards it. That's good. Okay. That's about it, so I'm sorry I've uh, missed. Are you? How oh, sorry. Not very, I just thought I'd say a word, you know. I am. Yeah. Well, <laughs> take a look at it. You got any excuses as to why you're sorry? No. Nothing to do with your space being invaded? There is that. You'd have thought I was Poland. <laughs> I am bearing in mind for one of my future vlogs, if I can ever work it out, the cognitive dissonance that I carry that World War II fascinates me. I did it. I did British history 1900 to 1950 for O level and did rather well at it, which included both wars. Um, and I suppose I'm old enough to have grown up in the aftermath. It was just all around you. Didn't it was just there, it was like the wallpaper. You don't notice it. Um, I mean, these days, I increasingly am horrified by war in general, especially the Ukraine thing. Ukraine is the motivation of Putin is so it's so last century I can't believe it's he's saying very similar things to to what Adolf Hitler was saying my last territorial claim on Europe and I'm just I can't believe it's going on again so are uh, you doing the vlog about your cognitive dissonance or so is I this suppose it? I suppose I am doing it okay so uh, this you know, I carry both things. That fascinates me. I'm absorbed by it. I've built these things almost all my life. Um, at the same time, as I've got older, I've got increasingly horrified by the whole damn thing. So you're going to give all this up, get rid of all the models? I did try it once. Did you? Several decades ago. What happened? Um, I think we moved to a bigger house that had a bit more space. It was, it was you know, a, th a three-bedroom wimpy place which uh, just didn't have enough room so that wasn't you giving it up that was life giving well, you giving and, it up because you had no, no choice space. i tried yeah. to convert a wardrobe and that <laughs> you know the competition to use that space and i actually started putting work services up in the attic to try and be able to do it up in the attic and that was just before we moved to canterbury so if i um if you get commandeered of... this room for something more important You'd have to give it up? No. Oh. Okay. What, you think there's not enough space in this house? <laughs> right, have you finished your cognitive yes. dissonance one as well? well? So it's the... I think I have already, yeah. It's the, what is it? It's a, a Heinkel. Heinkel 111. Heinkel H 111. H3. H3. H3 and cognitive dissonance in one vlog. Yeah. You see, and it, and it fascinates me... I, did, I didn't actually realise until I looked, but ICM is a is a Ukrainian company. All right. And I, you know, that sort of brings it home, really. Quite odd.